Happy Tuesday, Internet Land. As always, this is BitLab Live. My name is Andrew Averin. I am actually flying solo today. Um, Paul, uh, who is usually with us, um, was caught up in a few um, engineering-related uh, discussions, and we couldn't pull him away. So, as a stand-in, we have Falco the Falcon taking his place. Um, so, for those of you who have not joined us before, this is Little Bits BitLab Live. And if you've never heard of Little Bits, we are a company that produces this library of these amazing modular electronics that all snap together with magnets. So if I have this here and I have power, let's say I snap a pressure sensor attached, boop, and then I take a bar graph, boop, they only go one way, I have suddenly built a pressure sensitive light. Awesome. So as a part of Little Bits, one of the amazing initiatives we have running is something we call the BitLab. And the BitLab is an initiative where anybody can submit their own idea for a Little Bits module. And then we actually rely on you guys, the community, to upvote the ones that are most desirable. Think of it as crowdsourcing meets technological innovation all wrapped up with awesomeness and hardware. Um, and so every week we like to feature something brand new as a part of the BitLab. Um, and so as a part of today's agenda, we have a, a wonderful guest uh, by the name of Lysander Follett who is joining us uh, all the way from, I believe it's in Portland, where he works um, during the day for a little company called Nike, but he has designed some very cool stuff. So we will be chatting with him very, very, very shortly. Um, but just as a quick overview of everything else going on, um, we haven't actually been on the air for a while. We've had the holidays, we've had New Year, and Paul and I actually had the opportunity to go visit CES, the Consumer Electronics Show. And for those of you who, haven't, uh, who don't know what that is, it is the world's largest tech trade show. It is filled with thousands of companies and thousands of people, and anything and everything you've ever heard of with regard to technology is present there. And so we're going to give a little bit of a recap on some of the amazing things that we saw. Um, but before we do that, um, I do want to give you a little bit of a background on Lysander, a.k.a. Mini Gorilla. Uh, he is a little bit of, a, I, I, I like to think of him as a magician because he kind of does a little bit of everything. Um, but he's a French designer working uh, at Nike's Innovation Kitchen, technically under the title of Computational Design Innovator. And he does some amazing things that combine art and sound and music and technology and geometry in, just in ways that you've never really stopped to think about. Um, and so we are very thrilled to have him here as, uh, as one of our guests. Um, he has submitted something, and you'll actually see a picture of that right here on your screen, the Wii Bit. And the Wii Bit is actually a module that allows you to control little bits with the Wii Nunchuck. So if you think about what it probably takes to come up with a design like that, you need to be pretty smart. Um, and so we are thrilled that Lysander has joined us. And so I would like to welcome to the show, Lysander. Welcome, welcome. Hey. Hey. Thank you so Thank much you so for much being here. For being um, here. Um, so, so I give, I give everybody, everybody a little, everybody bit, a little bit of a background, background on, uh, on, what, it on what it is you do, do. But, but I'm going to guess, guess that you kind of do a little, do a little, little bit of everything, everything that's possible, possible as a human, as a human being. being. So, so, is there anything is there else anything you want to let everybody, let everybody know, know that, that you work on or what are some of the things that you do? Uh, sure. Uh, sure. So, uh, so definitely, definitely, like, like you mentioned, mentioned, I like to, to kind, of kind of look at different fields at the same time. So, I have a background in product design and computer science. So, I've always been a lot inspired by that sort of uh, merging between a different field, music, computer, electronics. So, yeah, definitely a lot of different inspiration. Uh, like you mentioned, I work at Nike as a mostly product designer, but I do a lot of uh, computer science as well on kind of algorithm uh, design. So. A little bit of every kind of background that, that makes uh, me want to kind of share stuff also on things like that. That's very, very, very cool. Um, so with this background, I mean, you kind of approach things from a very different perspective because you can look at things from a design background, from a technological background, from an art background, um, from a visual designer background. Um, 
is there any one way in which you sort of go about solving problems or is it really sort of specific to whatever it is that you're tackling at that given moment? Uh, so most of the time, uh, what I'm trying to do is uh, really working around like uh, human interaction and how can you try to improve a system by uh, adding more in, uh, like intuition or graphic feedback or interactivity. So that's why I've been playing a lot with the win and check. On a, I do a lot of uh, synthesis or module and I will walk you guys quickly through some of them so you have an idea of my background. But that's kind of w what intrigued me. It's like you have something and you're trying to make it even more meaningful to the user. And I think the win and check is definitely like one of the devices that I feel like it's so simple, but it's so efficient because it just combines many sensors and many ways to interact with the system. Yeah, no, you, you, you're definitely right. Um, and so one of the things uh, that I would love for you to do is to walk some of the folks through, um, first of all, the module itself, yeah. um, but then also perhaps, um, if you can, basically just what it can do. Because I, you know, I, what I would venture a guess to say is, not everybody really knows what the full potential is of something like this, you know? Yeah, so uh, why don't we start by the PCB board? So uh, the PCB board is uh, pretty simple. And uh, one of the neat things that is pretty cool is that uh, you can plug the win and check directly. So I'm going to show you that uh, just now. So it just snaps on the board. So that's already like a pretty neat feature. You don't have to like slice your cable or do anything to your cable. You can literally take the win and check that you're using every day on your uh, video game and just uh, plug it like that. So um, then it's a fairly simple module. So as you can see, uh, I'm using the the sort of uh, bits prototype bits that you can buy from the Little Bits uh, web shop, and those are really cool because you can just solder them onto your PCB board. So it's built around uh, Atmega 328, which is pretty much an Arduino Uno. And then uh, fairly simple design. But uh, let's keep in mind one of the neat function is that I can connect it uh, directly. So let's build something real quick. So I just snap my uh, wee bit through that. And then, of course, I use a power module. So turn on. And then maybe I start by uh, demo. So yeah. First, I should also show you the win and check. So for those that don't know what a win and check is, it's a small device made by Nintendo. And um, he has a few things that you can do. He has a joystick, so X, Y joystick. So right there, you already got a pretty, pretty good sensor. Then he also has an accelerometer and gyroscope. So if you tilt the win and check in different way, you can sense those um, uh, value. And then he has two press buttons as well. So if you think about it, it's like having four different bits because you have a joystick, accelerometer, gyroscope, and then two press button. So maybe the first thing I'll show you is uh, something actually pretty simple. So if you look at here, when I press on uh, the one of the button, I'm just activating some LED. So that's kind of like a basic press button, and you get two of those ones. So. That's like the first function you can do. And presumably, um, you could attach any module you want. As yeah, you, so I've plugged here, I've plugged the paragraph. So like you see, I can just plug this. And now I have that uh, working as a press button. So that's kind of the first. And I have the same one, of course, on the other side, because I have two buttons. So I can do the same stuff on that side. The second part that gets uh, way, way cooler is that uh, you can also use the joystick, like I say. So let's see. On here, you see I'm just like. Oh, that's very cool. So I can fade the LED with the joystick. And by pressing on that button, I can also fade it by uh, tilting the joystick. So, you, so same idea. Yeah, you can use the accelerometer that's in the. In yeah, the gyroscope. Joystick. So I'm right. using the gyroscope right there. So what I did is, uh, since there is not a lot of output on my board because I didn't want to put 10, what you have to do is, by default, you can use the joystick. And if you want to do the gyroscope, you just have to keep pressing on one of the buttons, and then you're using the gyroscope. So that's kind of for the simple, uh, basic description of it. But where it gets really cool is when you start to plug, uh, the, for example, the synthesizer kit. So let's try to do something real quick and see uh, if it's working. Yeah, so that should be good. So uh, before we move on to that, I just wanted to, uh, let's see. 
add something really important that I wanted to tell you guys. Yeah, le, le, so like you say, uh, you can plug whatever bit you want. So I plug just an LED to demo the fade, but it could be, for example, the vibration motor, or it could be a fan. So you kind of can do a lot out of just that small, simple device. Absolutely. And the win and check, by the way, is like 19 bucks, I think, uh, the Nintendo one. So it's pretty pretty cheap device for what it does. So I'm gonna try to turn on the volume and see if we can uh, hear something. So can you guys hear it? Absolutely. So we have a this is a live. I want to call okay. it a show because we're gonna get we're gonna you know get yeah, a exactly. thirty second show out of this of a Wii nunchuck controlled little bits synth kit. Synthesizer. Yeah, and it's a Nam show this week pretty soon in, uh, down in Anaheim, so it's the good time to do some audio synthesizer demo. <laughs> That's perfect. So, I'll leave you to it. Let's hear what you got. Yeah, so we get it in. So here I'm modulating with the joystick, and it kind of sounds like a pulse width modulation because the output of the Arduino is a square wave. So. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to press on that button and that's going to uh, trigger uh, the module, so the little bit sequencer that is plugged to a square wave and uh, we're going to hear what we get. So just by pressing on that button. Right, so because the, that, that's triggering the output, right? Yeah, so I have just a high and low gate and that's triggering the sequencer that is sitting right there. So. So yeah, pretty cool, pretty simple. And what I like also is that uh, most of the time when you, when you use the little bit kits, you kind of spend time to set up everything. And sometimes you just come in and you're messing everything because like, you have big, big finger or stuff like that. What's pretty cool with that is that you can pretty much like uh, get take a little bit of distance and just like... So yeah, pretty fun. So that's, that's kind of it for the demo. That is um, um, absolutely amazing. Um, and so just as a reminder to those who are watching now, the way in which the BitLab works is that we really truly do require you guys to vote up the modules that you want most. So, you know, you'll see the module that Lysander is holding up right now. So that is currently up for vote and it has about 250 or so votes um, and it needs to get all the way to 1,000. We have about, about a month left. And so the best thing that you guys as viewers can do is if you, if you want to see a module just like this, which you got to be crazy if you don't want something like this because that's amazing, um, head on over to the BitLab at littlebits.cc slash BitLab and you'll go ahead and cast your vote. Um, you can vote for as many modules as you like. Um, if you have a Littlebits account already, you can use that. Uh, you can sign up for a new account or you can just enter your email address. Any way works. Um, but we and Lysander require your guys' support. Um, because this is amazing. I mean, this is really, really, really innovative and really cool stuff. And obviously, uh, you know, I'm imagining a world, what happens when you have two nunchucks? What happens yeah, you know, exactly. when you start to combine things over and over and over again? Um, it just sort of says to me that, you know, the, the sky is really the limit in terms of what you might be able to do. And here at Little Bits, that is all that we are about. Yeah, you could you could definitely use it also like as a tilt sensor or with the cloud beat. I mean, you can get creative if you if you fix that on something. You can sense if that thing is moving, or like you can go crazy. So yeah, vote for it and uh, yeah, thanks for making such a great uh, little ecosystem as well. Because I've been doing electronics for a while, but I wish I had that when I was a kid. <laughs> That's very cool. It was more challenging when I was. A kid. <laughs> I'm with you. It was for me too. Uh, Lysander, thank you so, so much. Uh, we'll yeah, be thank posting you so much. links to everything that Lysander has done, um, as well as links directly to the module itself. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you so much, and we will speak to you again soon. Yeah, have a good day. Bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. So, moving right along in our packed agenda, um, one of the things that I definitely want to take a few moments and let you guys know about is we have a design competition currently running, which we are calling the Snap To It initiative and what we're doing is we're asking you guys to make projects that will help you guys keep your new year's resolutions 
I don't know what your resolutions are, but there's probably a way, whether it's keeping track of something or creating something or a reminder of something, um, you can use little bits to figure out a way to help you achieve you know, whatever your goals may be. Um, my goal is to get married, which happens in just about two and a half months. My fiance and I uh, really should make, we're gonna make a, a counter that, um, that reminds us how few days we have left to finish planning. So when you guys have figured out whatever your New Year's resolution is, create a project, head on over to littlebits.cc slash snap to it, and you can learn more about how exactly to submit your project and what you might be able to win, including a $75 gift certificate. The other thing that I want to let you guys know about is that if you are not already aware, the MP3 player is currently available for sale. So the MP3 player was launched as a part of the Smart Home Kit, and now we're launching it as a standalone module. So you can head on over to our website uh, and purchase the MP3 player and download any of the amazing tracks you might have lying around um, and play them directly with little bits. Next up. As I mentioned before, Paul and I were at CES. Now, CES took place between January 6th and 9th in sunny Las Vegas, Nevada. Um, and for those of you who have not been to Las Vegas, it's actually quite strange because it was freezing and then it was roasting. We after all, are, after all, in the middle of the desert. So we saw a number of amazing things at CES and we actually had um, a, a pretty cool presence as well. Um, so as many of you may know, um, we have worked with Atmel as a, as a component supplier for a number of our modules, and so we partnered with them and actually had a number of our components and modules and kits lying out there at the Atmel Maker Station. Now, for those of you who have never been to CES, there are over 4,000 companies that show up. So they take over a full convention center and another convention center. So this is one booth in a sea of thousands. Um, and so there are maker spaces and up and coming company spaces. There are established company spaces. So you really can kind of see everything. But then there are spaces that live outside of sort of the official convention centers. And so we partnered, uh, or we were asked by uh, the awesome company Refinery29 and participated in their women's apartment of the future. And we actually brought uh, our fish feeder project as well as a cloud bit fish bowl. We had a fish named Millie after Millennium. Uh, we had an iPad set up and so this was a part of their demonstration where anybody could come through, actually, excuse me, I think it was journalists that were allowed to come through and photograph all the amazing connected projects that were on demonstration there. Other things that we saw, and this is Paul's favorite, and I had to make sure that I call this one out. There's a company that creates mobile video conferencing robots. For those of you who may have seen the movie Demolition Man, the awesome cinematic classic that it is, of course, there's this scene where they're all on video conferences in a conference room, and the TV screens themselves actually rotate and pivot based upon where the person is moving throughout the room. That is exactly what these things are. So as Paul was sort of approaching the robot, the person, the salesperson who was actually on the other end, was looking at him and watching at him, watching him, and, and actually chuckled as Paul was understandably a little bit taken aback by this robot moving towards him. Uh, it's a very cool technology. And again, this is just sort of out there on the conference floor. Another company that we got to meet with, um, and I chatted for a long time with their founder, this is a company called Volterra. And Volterra actually won a competition that's held at CES every year called the TechCrunch Hardware Battlefield. And they award $50,000 to the best startup. And what Volterra has done, and these guys are a Canadian-based company, they have built a roughly $1,500 circuit board printer. And so you'll see they're lying in front of the device a number of different materials that have circuits printed on them. And so the device itself etches out, or excuse me, deposits silver ink for you to lay your components directly on, and then actually heats it back up after you've placed your components to fully complete the circuit. These guys won $50,000. They are really cool. They are doing amazing work, and I'm really looking forward to seeing what they have. The last awesome company that I wanted to call out is a company called Phonotonic. And Nicholas, one of their co-founders, that's uh, their, their actual device there in his right hand, it is an accelerator-powered music-generating device. And if that sounds like a lot, basically, when you move and shake this thing, it creates music. 
It is amazing. So imagine juggling these things and the beats and the sounds and the tones that you can create. It was absolutely unbelievable. And last but not least, I wanna show you one of the craziest things that I saw out there on the conference floor. These are three people getting their teeth whitened. I really don't even remember the company's name, but they had stations where you could literally get your teeth whitened. It's crazy. When I say anything can happen at CES, I really, 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 truly mean anything can happen at CES. Um, I do want to thank all the folks who we got to talk to. Uh, we had an amazing time. We met with a number of different companies. Um, we also met with an, a number of wonderful companies who were out there displaying their work. Um, and it was a really, really, really worthwhile trip. So last but not least, as we wrap up our first show of 2015, as always, we have our trivia question. So the last trivia question, which is all the way from five weeks ago, was what was the first module to get voted up to 1,000 votes. And actually, nobody got it right. I was really surprised. The first module to get voted up to 1,000 votes was actually Backyard Brains' muscle sensor. But that's okay. It's okay that nobody got that because now we've got a new question. And this one's a little different because we're looking to find out who's gonna come closest to the right answer. And the question is as follows. At CES this year, as I mentioned, there were over 4,000 companies, but there were even more participants. The question is, how many participants showed up at CES in 2015? Now, I'm not expecting anybody to get the exact answer because it'd be really hard, it'd be amazing if you did, but we are looking for the number that is closest to, and this is not Price is Right rules, so you can go over. So we're looking for the number that is closest to the number of actual participants at CES this year. Um, as always, you can head on over to our forum and answer the question there. Um, and the winner will win an HDK. And it was actually the HDK that allowed Lysander to build that awesome wee bit. So as always, I wanna thank you guys for tuning in this week. You can check out all of our shows uh, right here in this YouTube playlist that's uh, hopefully right next to me as you're watching this right now. Um, and if you have any other things that you want to know, feel free to reach out to us on Twitter, on Facebook, or you can head, head to us in the forum. Have a wonderful week, and we'll see you guys soon.